Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. In today's video, we are covering day three, the final day of our very fun trip to the East Coast. On our first day, we visited the Potomac River, got some fresh ice cream, and so much more. And on our second day, we had an amazing time walking the National Mall and seeing all the monuments with our family members. If you haven't seen those videos, make sure you check them out either before or after this video. But without further ado, let's go ahead and check out what we did on our final day of vacation. So our last day of vacation was actually on Father's Day, and we had to pack up our stuff before leaving the house because we weren't going to come back at all. And then we made our way to St. John the Evangelist Catholic Church. This is actually in Frederick, Maryland, and was founded in 1763. And it is the oldest parish in the Archdiocese of Baltimore. So from what I understand after talking with a gentleman there, the church originally was like in a different building and then they eventually moved to, you know, the current church. And I believe this church was then consecrated sometime in the 1800s. But it was so cool that like this was one of the oldest churches in the area and it was just very beautiful. We sat in the way back just in case Jack needed to be brought outside because, you know, he can be a little antsy, but little boys are not meant to sit still for a whole hour. And I can't lie, I did bring like some blueberries. I tried to bring some quiet snacks just to kind of keep his mouth busy so that it's not busy making noise. But after celebrating Mass, we walked over to a nearby coffee shop and enjoyed some coffee there. I really wish I got a little bit larger of a size. Sometimes, this is what I hate about going to new places, is I never know if I'm going to like something. So I'm hesitant to like buy the large of a drink that I may or may not like because if I don't like it, I'm like, man, I spent all this extra money on getting a little bit more. But then if I buy the smaller one, I end up liking it and I'm like, oh, I should have just spent the extra dollar or whatever to get a little bit more of it. But anyways, I enjoyed my coffee here. And then we wanted to walk around the town and also see if we could get like a postcard for day three of our trip. While walking, we did see like very small little like walking signs, which I thought was really cute. I'm not used to them being that small when you're crossing the street. But after doing some souvenir shopping, we jumped back in the car and made our way to visit the National Shrine of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton. So Elizabeth Ann Bailey was born into a prominent Episcopalian family in New York City on August 28, 1774. Her father was a well-known physician and became one of the first health officers of New York City. Her mother, daughter of an Episcopal minister, died when Elizabeth was only three years old. When she was 19, Elizabeth married William Maggie Seton, heir to a wealthy New York shipping business. She and William welcomed five children between 1795 and 1802, Anna Maria, William, Richard, Catherine, and Rebecca. The political and economic turmoil of the early 19th century took a severe toll on William's business and on his health. In 1801, the couple endured bankruptcy and William became ill with tuberculosis. Seeking a more temperate climate to slow the disease, Elizabeth, William, and Anna Maria sailed to Italy. Soon after their arrival, on December 27, 1803, William died. While waiting to return to America, Elizabeth and Anna Maria spent several months with the Felici family, William's friends and business associates. Among them, Elizabeth observed Roman Catholic piety practiced by their social equals for the first time. She was deeply impressed, especially by the doctrine of the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. She returned to New York full of turmoil at the thought of becoming Catholic. After almost a year of prayer and discernment, she entered the Catholic Church. The choice triggered three years of financial struggle and social discrimination in New York. At the invitation of several priests, she moved her family to Baltimore to open a school for girls. Catholic women from around the country came to join her work. The women soon moved to Emmitsburg, Maryland, where they formally began their religious life as Sisters of Charity of St. Joseph's. Elizabeth was named Superior and came to be called Mother Seton. Despite initial hardships, the community flourished, adding more sisters and students every year. 
During her years in Emmitsburg, Elizabeth lost two of her daughters to tuberculosis, Anna Maria and Rebecca. In time, Elizabeth began to experience the effects of the disease. She died January 4, 1821, not yet 47 years old. When we showed up, mass was actually going on, so we ended up checking out like kind of the museum-like rooms on the other side of the building. And it was really amazing to see the beautiful artwork, this like needlepoint type work that teenage girls made just so many years ago. So there was like a whole room dedicated to like this type of artwork. And then there were other rooms displaying the type of clothes that the sisters wore back when Elizabeth Ann Seton was alive. And then there was another wing of the building that cut like with different rooms covered different parts of her life. Now, because we did have a deadline and we had to be at the airport at a certain point later in the afternoon, we couldn't stay here for too long. So, you know, it was kind of a bummer that we couldn't just walk through and read everything about St. Elizabeth Ann Seton. However, all of the information I'm sure could be found online. So I did try to just document some of the cool pieces from her past that were on display. Now, Elizabeth was actually a convert to Catholicism, and they had some of her journals where she was writing back and forth to a friend that kind of covered like her, the struggles that she had internally of whether or not to become Catholic, and then eventually her decision to become Catholic. For those of you watching who are not Catholic or maybe don't quite understand why we honor the saints, a simple way of putting it is we believe that these saints are with Christ in heaven, and just as we would ask a friend to pray for us here on earth if we're struggling with something, we believe that we can go ahead and also ask our friends in heaven to pray for us as well and intercede for us. And we may ask, you know, different saints to pray for us depending on our situation. And so in, in no way are we worshiping them or anything like that. We are simply asking them to pray for us because, you know, again, they are in heaven with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it really is no different from asking a friend on earth currently to go ahead and pray for us and for our intentions as well. But anyways, Juan stopped in the gift shop and picked up some little cardinal birds that he found there for Aubrey because, you know, her love for birds is so strong. And he also got me a St. Anthony medal because the day before we were like asking St. Anthony to like help us in finding a parking spot because he's the, the patron saint of like lost things. And so you know, when you're searching for something, you can go ahead and ask him for help. And sometimes, you know, things just kind of appear in a place that you've already checked. It's amazing. So he got me a little St. Anthony medal. And then it was almost time to head to the airport. And we picked up some lunch at a, you know, place that we don't have out in California called Roy Rogers. And we just got some like chicken uh, tenders and French fries. I think Juan may have gotten a hamburger. I'm not quite sure. I don't really remember. And we ate that in the car on our way to the airport. 
So I actually didn't film really anything in the airport and our experience traveling home, mainly because I was just trying to handle my kids and I didn't want to add any additional stress to myself because I was already a little anxious about not bothering other people in the airport and on the plane. But I do want to share some of my experience so that you guys you know, kind of know how it went. So we got through security similar to day one. You know, we were trying to unpack everything, take out all of our electronics, and we took up like a whole part of the conveyor belt just with all of our car seats and stroller and and just all of that. But we got through security fine and made it to our gate with plenty of time to spare. I did have lots of snacks prepped for the airport as well as the plane. I have found that airport food is just way too expensive. And so I kind of, you know, grew up with the idea that like you mainly just bring your own snacks whenever you go someplace where things are definitely going to be overpriced. So we had snacks prepared. So I really tried my best to let Jack like get his energy out in the airport, but I was really struggling internally with like what the best way of doing that was. And he really wanted to just like run around. And so I kind of let him do that. I was following him as he was like running up and down the aisles. And I was torn because I knew that he needed to run. And I wasn't going to just like run after him. I was kind of just walking in the general area. He was having fun, kind of getting his energy out. But I was a little self-conscious about, you know, uh, how I was being viewed by those around me. There was a gentleman who was like you know, good for you. Like, you know, he's got to get his energy out and saw that also as a necessity. But I am sure there are people who maybe most of them don't have kids and they're just like, wow, look at this mom just letting her kid run everywhere or whatever. And like I said, that's an internal struggle for me because if I made him just sit in a chair and watch an iPad, then in the plane, I knew it was going to be really bad because he is just sitting there in the airport. And we could have maybe walked around and had him hold my hand but you know that's really not getting all his energy out because he just has so much of it so I don't know let me know down below in the comments if you would be annoyed if there was this little kid just like running by you while you're waiting for your plane or if you just wouldn't care but anyways well after we were done waiting in the airport we were able to board the plane and Juan actually got us like the very last row in the airplane because I wanted to be like close to the bathrooms and you know maybe not in the middle of everybody and I really felt like I was gonna have this you know under control. I had the iPad with like a number of episodes or movies on it. I had snacks. I had my little thing of play-doh but I have to admit I cried during the flight because I was overwhelmed and felt like I was doing a horrible job because the kids just lost interest in the shows. Like they didn't want to watch like a a movie straight through and they were getting antsy and they were like fidgeting and complaining at times. And at one point in our flight, I remember the flight attendant like walking down the aisle and showing a little countdown, but I thought it was like, oh, that's how much time has passed. Oh, great. We only have an hour left. But instead, it was actually a countdown to like landing and we had three and a half hours longer to go because it's a longer flight to come from the East Coast back to California than it is to go there. And so I was just like, how in the world am I going to entertain my children for three and a half more hours? (laughs) I felt so discouraged. And at one point in the flight, one of the flight attendants was just like, let your son run up and down the aisle. And there was a part of me that was like, really? Like, cool. But also everyone on the plane is going to be like, oh, look at that mom. She's just letting her kid run up and down. But I'm like this wasn't even my idea (laughs) so I ended up walking to the front of the plane all the way from the back with Jack and then I let him like run back to Juan who was sitting in the back of the plane and I let him like run up and down maybe one more time with me at the front maybe I can't really remember but I remember once I got back to my seat he ran all the way to the front and all the way back at least once and I just felt like so self-conscious even though, again, this wasn't even my idea. It was like encouraged by the flight attendant. And they did, they were trying to encourage me. They said, you know, they've seen a lot worse. You know, you have a little two and a half year old wide awake on a plane and you they can't even sit through mass for an hour, 
expecting him to sit through a plane ride that's like five at five five and a half hours long it, it'd be unrealistic to think that he could do that without having some type of maybe tantrum or need to get out some energy so after traveling both the first day with a red eye and the last day with you know no red eye and wide awake not covering any nap time part of the day I really don't know which was worse for me. (laughs) To be honest, I was very stressed on the way home and I just felt like a bad mom. I know that I am probably the most critical of myself and maybe other people, you know, wouldn't have viewed me like that in that moment, but I was very stressed and I'm glad we made it. You know, we made it through. We ended up getting home and um, drove home. We got home safely and all is well now, but (laughs) it was a stressful time in the plane with my two and a half year old son. I think, you know, especially now at, at five and a half years old, Aubrey is much easier to, you know, deal with on a plane. I can give her snacks, I can give her a show or a craft or, you know, something to do. And, you know, for the most part, she she would do fine. It was just this stage in our life where we have this very energetic toddler. It made it difficult, um, you know, on a plane ride. But anyways, like I said, we got home safely and all is well. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching today's video, the final installment of our very fun family vacation to the East Coast. I hope you guys give this video a thumbs up. And if you are new here, I'd like to invite you to stick around and subscribe. We have some more motherhood content coming up in my next video. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness and I will catch you in the next one.